Nikki here at the Truck Boss Show. Today, we're joined by our friend, Andrea Marks. She is the Director of Communications for Trucker Nation. Thanks for joining us today, Andrea. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So today, we're talking about an open comment period when it comes to a very important topic, which is driver training. The FMCSA has requested public comment regarding new tri driver training regulations. Currently, there is no parameters to driver training other than the trainer's discretion to when the trainee is ready to hit the road. So, Andrea, can you share in depth what the FMCSA is looking for in the public comments and maybe if there's any regulations out there when it does come to that driver training? So, if we take a step back from everything, we all know that in February, so fe specifically February 7th, 2020, new training regulations are set to come out, which is something that the industry has been craving for years because currently the driver training regulations are dismal at best. It's four very vague topics by which someone has to be trained to. Um, they don't actually have to go do any maneuverability tests other than when they test with their state driver's licensing agency. Um, and uh, frankly, the, the, the training as it uh, exists today is, mm, it leaves a lot to the imagination. And I think as an industry, we really have been craving uh, something more um, to hopefully ward off some some training related accidents that we see in the industry or have seen in the industry. So the FMCSA underwent a negotiated rulemaking where they brought in uh, stakeholders from all different um, segments of the industry, law enforcement officers, insurance agencies, drivers, uh, trucking related groups, uh, you name it, just a wide mm -hmm. gamut of organizations, and they went through a process where they negotiated the new regulations. So those new regulations are very robust and far different than the training regulations that we have seen in the past. So there's a very robust curriculum. Drivers actually have to receive classroom training from an organization that's registered on FMCSA's training provider registry. Then they have to pass a written test that's administered in English, and they have to receive a certain score, so an 80% or higher, before they can move on to the next phase of training. The next phase of training is training with a trainer that has at minimum two years of experience um, and holds a CDL and any and all endorsements for which that trainer is providing training. So they do uh, behind the wheel training on a closed range, and there's a set of maneuvers that the driver has to be able to um, conduct and the driver trainer has to, um, it's a proficiency based training. So the driver trainer has to say, yes, you can perform all of these maneuvers uh, before you can move to the next phase of training. The last phase of training is where a, a driver trainer who has at minimum two years of experience and all the endorsements for which the training that they are administering um, and the driver trainee goes out on public roads. And there's additionally um, a, a whole set of proficiency based maneuvers that that driver trainer um, has to, or that driver trainee has to administer and be able to proficient proficiently uh, move through those maneuvers before they can then um, complete their training and then go to their state driver's licensing agency to take uh, the test with that driver's licensing agency. So that is far different and far more robust than we've ever seen in the past. However, currently the United Parcel Service or UPS as we all know them, um, they have submitted a request for an exemption to these driver training requirements. And um, our organization, Trucker Nation, we firmly believe that there's a time and place for exemptions in the trucking industry. However, as it relates to training and training new drivers to come out and um, you know engage in public commerce, uh, we don't believe that there's a place for uh, exemptions in that arena. So. Um, we, the, or excuse me, let's back up for a second. They have, um, they have a, submitted an exemption request. One part of their exemption request is asking that they be able to continue to use driver trainers that have, um, less than two years of driving experience. And, uh, second, the second part of their uh, training request is that they, 
um, not have to register each one of the physical locations that they provide training at. So the regulations do dictate that uh, every physical location by which training is administered has to be registered on FMCSA's training provider registry. Uh, UPS is saying that their uh, it would be too much of an administrative burden for them to list all of their 1,400, um, I believe that's the number that they have in their request, the 1,400 locations on the training provider registry and then have an associated unique identifier number uh, for each one of those locations. However, we feel it's so important that each one of those locations be on the training provider registry mm -hmm. because the final rule goes on to say that each one of the locations that are listed on the training provider registry are open open to audit, they are open to review, and um, it specifically says in the final rule that that's a way for FMCSA to continually monitor these organizations that are providing, um, providing assurance that each one of these trainees have proficiently, proficiently passed each one of the sections of the new driver trainer, or, or excuse me, training regulations. So we want to see this organization uh, or this exemption request go denied because it is so important that every one of these locations be listed and that driver trainers have at minimum two years of experience. It's one of the hottest issues, mm -hmm. aside from hours of service that we're hearing in the trucking industry right now. Absolutely. So uh, thank you. I can't, I can't thank you enough for your insight on that. That's a, it's a huge topic. Um, mm -hmm. According to an article by Fleet Owner, they ask if on-ramp ELDT would increase competition in the market for CDL training, and it is believed that the industry could absorb the changes financially. Um, and would that put pressure on driver shortage? What are your thoughts about that? You know, I can't say that I disagree with that. I think that competition is a good thing. I think right now it's just such an open system. Um, it's very loosey-goosey, if you will. And uh, that uh, doesn't necessarily allow for competition in the marketplace as it relates to driver uh, training. And drivers can receive training wherever they want or not at all and just go to their, uh, their state driver's licensing agency and take the test. Uh, to ensure that we are, and dare I say, level the playing field, uh, to en to ensure that we're getting a consistent training across the board, especially with a new generation of drivers coming in, I think a monopoly is a good thing. And I think maybe weeding out some of that self-training, so um, organizations training their own people and maybe sending them to a third-party place that they would have to exchange some money uh, to ensure that that happened and they got a, con a good consistent training. I don't think is a bad thing. I think a, a, a good, healthy competition um, spurs a, a more healthy economic marketplace. Nice. So, um, like I said a minute ago, it's obvious that this is a very hot topic of the industry right now. And um, can you go ahead and remind the audience where they can go and how much time they have to comment in this open thread? So uh, this particular comment period right now um, is set to close on July 19th. So we don't have a lot of time. That's the end of next week. Um, and currently, and this should make every driver out there, every industry stakeholder out there that's listening and watching this, this should make them a little angry. Um, currently, there are only 24 comments on wow. this topic. Yeah, I think that's incredibly dismal. And this is a huge topic and a topic that we hear lots of trucking organizations, trucking groups, truck drivers, industry stakeholders. We hear them talk about driver training and the importance of a more robust driver training program and, and how important it is to the trucking industry to avoid some of the things, um, some of the unfortunate accidents that we've seen recently. And without that, we might continue to see some of these unfortunate accidents. However, it's not translating over to action. So we're hearing a lot of talk, but we're not seeing a lot of action. So I would encourage drivers to go on to regulations.gov and um, the, the docket number is FMCSA 2019 um, 0139. Uh, and they can 
go make a comment. They can file a formal comment. Complaining on Facebook, no one will ever hear. Complaining on a driver forum or at a truck stop, no one will ever hear. So um, get on a different website and use your voice in a way that can that can be productive. If people do have uh, questions about how to make comments, Trucker Nation has created the industry's only how-to guide that is 100% tailored to every open docket that FMCSA puts out. So if you go to www.truckernation.org and you click the comment now section, we have a, a complete how-to guide to comment on this specific docket and the link where you can go make a comment very easily all in one place. Nice. Well, once again, thank you so much, Andrea, for the insight. And um, if you want it, if you want your voice to be heard, go to the website, regulations.gov. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. Regulations.gov and make your voice heard because the time is now. This open comment thread is ending very, very soon. So go there. Just do it if you want to get heard. There is no more whining or, um, you know, talking about it later once the time has passed. So uh, tell your friends about it or anybody who, you know, is going to be affected by it because everyone is going to in the trucking industry. So, um that's right. And at one more point about this. I think it's important for us to all consider the fact that if there were, let's let's throw around a number, if there were 10,000 comments or 5,000 comments even on this particular, um, this particular issue, it would be very, very difficult for the regulators to uh, grant this exemption. And think about the precedent that could be set for any other large organization that wants to continue to be part of the problem rather than be part of the solution if this exemption request is granted. Exactly. Well, once again, thank you, Andrea. And I plead for everybody to go be part of the conversation. And we'll talk again soon. And we'll see you all on the next Truck Boss Show.